Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I don't hear it. Fourier uh, does not hear the Canadian in you. And I knew the first three words that you would say would be, see, I don't hear it. And if we, like, you know, gave you a longer answer to, uh, so, uh, you know, like, do you still hear the, I hear the Canadian in you. Do you still hear it? No, I don't hear it at all. Uh, I don't, I, I, I get that a lot. I, I've lost a lot of it. I don't say A at all. Um, I think I've just been down here for so long that it's kind of went away a little bit. There's certain words I think that I say that, that people laugh at, but most of the time I, I get, you don't sound Canadian. Well, Most of the time I get that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I know Peter Laviolette like you do, and he's a guy from Massachusetts who now sounds like he's from Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That the, the dressing rooms, the locker rooms usually just kind of bring everybody to the middle. Hockey talk. Hockey talk. My favorite. There we go. My favorite, my favorite is hockey talk. Somebody on the Twitch just said honky talk. Well, there that there is that too. <laughs> Razor. Uh, Razor on the back to back on uh, after the Tampa game. Your energy level was at a what that night? Um, I I mean I enjoyed the Tampa game. I've had much lower energies. If you watched at one thirty in the morning in the back to back Calgary Edmonton, I'm sure it was a lot lower then. Um, it was probably about a. Uh, Six and a half, seven. Yeah, you and Jaff had to, like, travel or something the next day. I think Sophia asked if you were going to do the college stuff uh, in your uh, podcast, and I think uh, Jaffe was just like, yeah, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to the Bruins and <laughs> getting the hell out of here. I go somewhere. Well, yeah, I'm down, at, I'm down at Bristol now. So I did nine hours. Yeah, nine hours of college hockey yesterday, and I have nine hours staring at me today at 2 o'clock. So t my energy level tonight at 11.07 will be probably at a 4, 3 maybe. Um, long day coming up here. So what do you think the energy level will be uh, for the, uh, the Bruins on Saturday? Now, granted, now they have officially um, – uh, uh, clinched a playoff spot for the eighth straight year. They needed what uh, either the Capitals or the uh, the Wings, either one of those teams to lose. Both of them lost, so they go into the playoffs again. So with that, where do you think the energy level is going to be on uh, on uh, on Saturday? It should be good. They they got two days off and they stayed on the road the time, so everybody gets to sleep a lot. No one has a lot of chores to do, so. That's positive for the guys. They have practice today in Washington, and then they'll be ready to go tomorrow. Um, I thought their energy level was great against Florida after they, they got yelled at the other day in practice and, and are trying to get ramped up for practice. And the other, they have the best schedule. Um, a lot of years, these guys have had games in hand, and they've grinded at the end. They have the, the, the least amount of games left in the league, which is a huge positive for them this season. I think they're going to be able to take advantage of these two-day rest periods that they just had now where everyone else is back-to-backs and every other day. So I think their energy level will be high on Saturday. I expect a good effort. Uh, Razor, the back-to-back uh, the -back was unique because Florida and Tampa are very different. Florida leans on you. They just muck it up. They grab you. They like to scrum. And should we be worried about Tampa? I know you and Jeff were talking about, hey, it looks like Tampa's kind of rounding into shape. Regardless of what the numbers say at the end of the year with Tampa Bay, are you seeing a team that you're going to have to take seriously come the postseason? Oh, yeah, no question. Absolutely. When, they, when you have one of the best defenders, you have two guys, the whole, the, the whole core of one Stanley Cups multiple times, uh, Kucherov probably could be maybe the MVP of the season. Um, they're 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 legit. They're going to be a hard out. This in the first round, guys. It, I this first round, no matter where you are in in the Eastern Conference, especially, is going to be ridiculous. It, it really is. It's it's not going to be one of those years where oh my god, I can't believe this team or that team didn't get out of the first round. It's because they're playing. The, there's six teams going into the Eastern Conference playoffs that think they can win the Stanley Cup. Legitimately believe that they're Stanley Cup worthy. And the other two are going to be hot getting in on the last day. So it's uh, it's it's going to be ridiculous how hard the first round is for the Eastern Conference playoffs. So we're talking to uh, Andrew Raycroft. And I'm curious, off of that, Razor, what's, and maybe this is a stupid question, 
but you was you, no, you not should, you. You should you should understand. It's by hockey now. talk. It's, it's, it's hockey talk. Yeah, for me. we're insulated here. Is it is it yeah. is it fair to say <laughs> that um, style is more important? Like <laughs> hockey, the way you play, like your philosophy, your style of play is more challenging than a team's personnel. Oh, um, no, I think, well, I think it's, I think it's harder to get there because you need 22 personnel to get there where the personnel, you can have bits and pieces of everybody, but if you really like this Bruins style, this Bruins culture, it's, that's been, that's been what, when did Chara got here in 07? So that's, 17 years of natural selection, essentially, to get to this point where the Bruins know exactly what kind of personnel they need to have, what kind of person, what kind of character, what kind of player. Um, there's been guys that have got shipped out very quickly. That's part of that natural selection. You you, re, you can read into all of those quick moves and, and, and know this is how the Bruins have got to this culture. So, I would say that the style that you play is predicated on the personnel and you need all of them, so it's harder to get to that. I think teams want to, but they also get blinded or they get distracted by high-end talent that the Bruins don't get distracted by that anymore. They, they understand exactly what they need and what kind of person they need to, to be able to pull the rope the same way. Razor, I know a couple nights ago, uh, Hamper was with Peak, Carlo was with Watherspoon, if everybody is upright and ready to go on the back end, who are the back six and how would you pair them? Well, I liked, I was in, I was intrigued the other night. Um, the game didn't really settle into to really understanding or seeing how those lineups or those pairings would have worked. It didn't, it just wasn't one of those games where you could, it really became clear. Um, uh, those are certainly my top six. That's who's starting, um, Watherspoon Peak, and then, of course, Hampus, Carlo, Grizzly, McAvoy. Um, I, I would imagine, again, this is very matchup-based, depends on who they play, what mm -hmm. kind of team they play, uh, but I would, I would probably stick to how it's been where you have Carlo, Lindholm, McAvoy, Grizzly, and then the other two guys. When it comes to, uh, first of all, like, how would you define high danger chances? Like, What is that? Is it just a breakaway? Is it uh, – I'm just trying to, like, looking at the stats, looking at the numbers, look at the, you know, the game they lost against uh, Tampa. Everyone keeps bringing up high danger chances, either the amount that they had to withhold or the ones that they gave up on. Like, they didn't even use them. Like, they had too much passing going on. How do you explain that? Well, high danger chances are typically in the slot, which is the middle of the ice between zero and – 30 feet away. Um, it, usually they bring into consideration an east-west pass over the midline, meaning a pass across center ice and then a shot directly off of that. Typically that's a one-timer or a quick play. That, that's high danger. Uh, so, it, But also, you know, you can pass the, the eye test as well. Sometimes um, with those analytics, a high, then they, they haven't got this figured out yet. Um, a breakaway from David Pasternak is different than a breakaway against Christian Fourier. So both of those would be high danger opportunities, but at the same time, I'm probably picking Fourier to take the breakaway on me rather than David Pasternak. Mm, I see what you did there. Mm. That, that was that was uncalled for. <laughs> Called a shot that was is really for. what it was. I don't think that was really needed, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Razor, you mentioned Jim Montgomery's call out of this team. Last year, didn't need to do a lot of that. What does it say about Monty this year that there is that confidence there and that there is kind of understanding the pulse of the team? Because Friday night, they are, excuse me, against Florida, sorry. This team did respond. It, yeah, they, they did respond. I, it's just him being here another year. No no Bergeron, no Krejci, a lot of younger guys, knowing he has to coach more. Um, you know, I'm sure he blew up on guys privately last season that, that no one saw but but publicly for him to do that he's just trying to get everybody's attention and so I, I think that's that that is his coaching style that he feels comfortable doing that that's how he gets people's and players attention and I, I think it goes to just kind of the, the roster and the team they have they need a they need the the whip a little bit more than what they needed last season
Uh, so, uh, Razor, what is, uh, what's on the schedule today? Uh, nine hours of, uh, college hockey. Uh, what do we got? Uh, yeah, Mesopotamia basically. state against Western Saskatoon. What's going on? No, 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 no. We, we See, got the big it. boys today. We got the big boys today. We got Boston college at two o'clock. So you got to tune into that. Everybody they're the number one team in the country. And, uh, at this point should roll through this tournament, but of course it's hockey. So you never know. Uh, Quinnipiac against Wisconsin. So another bit of a local flair there. And then tonight, North Dakota, Michigan, that's as big as it gets. Michigan State as well. So those are all football schools, guys. You might have actually heard a couple of those. Wisconsin, well, Michigan, North Dakota. Well, not North Dakota. Yeah, I was going to say. State. Oh, Quinn, North yeah. Dakota State. Powerhouse. Yeah, North Dakota State's had more football yeah, success in BC. Allen. My boy, Josh Allen. My boy, Josh Allen. Uh, boy. Why can't Why can't BC football be as good as BC hockey? Because of Clemson and Florida uh, State. <laughs> yeah, Florida. Investigate, Florida. investigate yeah. that, Razor. Flo- Florida State yeah. can't execute the line change like they can uh, yeah, having the I offensive think, line against the, the, the. I would assume the the recruiting pools in two different parts of the country. It makes uh, it a little more. So one one pool is a little more used to the cold than the other. Hey, um, hey. I mean, I, and hey, listen. Yeah, the reality is, if if Florida State or Miami had a hockey team. There might be a few more guys going there than Boston College, too. Hey, Razor, hmm. let me ask you a weird question. That Minnesota high school hair hockey team that they put online every year, do you yeah. do you do you do you look at that and think of, you know, a great mullet once gone by? Yeah, those are the good old days. Blind you know, the bleach blonde hair for playoffs. Um that that was a thing. I'm not sure. And it uh, certainly is a thing in Minnesota. They, they've they really leaned into that, and the kids do a pretty good job uh, getting creative with their hair or style. Did you, at one point in time, have a mullet that you then dyed white? No, I, I didn't go long hair too often. When I did, it was kind of more longer on top rather than longer on the back. Never really went full mullet. It, and. The mullet thing kind of came in the last five or six years where it, like, returned. I missed it in the 80s, and I missed it on the back end here now, the new age mullet. So um, I had long hair, but it wasn't wasn't meant to be a mullet. So you missed mullet and, like, the Lanny McDonald giant mustache as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I pull. I we went mullet or we went mustache a little bit just for fun. We would we would go with a mustache every you know every middle of the season when you're kind of bored. But um, yeah, now the mustache is a little bit more um, a little bit more accepted nowadays as well. Can you grow a good one if you had to? I don't. I would. I would I, envision Jaffe might be able to grow the better facial hair between the two of you because of the follically challenged up top. My mustache grows really well. Uh, everything else is is probably not as good. I haven't let it go in a while, but I had a hard time. Well, I mean, at 23, I was still I was still trying to get to puberty. I had no chance of growing a beard at that point. But you know, I'm probably a little better now. I have to shave a little bit more. But but no, my mustache is good. Everything else not so good. Jaffe would crush me. Any that. any discussion at Nesson of the playoff mustache and kind of letting it go, mm. or do you guys have you to? You guys should do it also. Yeah, like, can't no, you do no. it with the team and get away with it? No, no, that's a that's a team player thing. Um, oh, I, I know. Think... Listen, listen. There are no. some people that do it, so I don't want to offend anybody. But as a former player, that like offends me when people put play, you know do the playoff beard. Right? It's like, well, no. It's kind of one of those things. It's like you get to do it if you're on the team. Um, so if I if I rolled in and like, hey guys, look at my playoff beard, I would I would take it on the chin for sure. Ooh, and on that note, there you go. Razor, have a uh, great time with all the uh, college hockey stuff. We will talk to you next Friday, friend. Thanks a bunch. And hopefully Fourier heard all of the Canadian in you during this interview. When he says tomorrow. That tomorrow is one of them. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Out. Out. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Yeah, all that. Razor, thank you, buddy. We'll see you. You got it. Happy Easter, huh? Yeah, there you go. Uh, The Easter Bunny shows up for you. Happy Easter. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Uh, The Easter Easter Bunny. Yeah, oh, you doing a big Easter egg hunt for uh, all the kids? No, I'm over that stuff. And really, Easter Easter is about, 
you know, our Lord Jesus Christ rising from the dead. I Mama Fourier, no I'm messing sure around on Easter. All over, no, no messing around. Will on you? Easter. Will you? Uh, in honor of Mama Fourier, like go to mass on Easter or something like that? Will you actually rise early out of your own bed to worship? No, I'm just gonna be honest. But she will send me, which I will send all of you, a very, very long prayer, which I'll send all you guys. It's oh, an Easter I prayer. Need it. And it starts with, he is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. Spoiler. Every single, every single one. Oh, Billy. Spoiler. <laughs> but it happens every year. <laughs> Not for us, it hasn't. <laughs> I'm gonna wake up in Atlantic City on Sunday morning oh, after, that's right. watching, uh, after watching after uh, watching bar barbaric UFC. My God, I'm gonna go watch people fight because it's fun. <laughs> Quite honestly, that'd be something. Yeah, the Easter Bunny thing. I got over that uh, pretty early. I just so I'm so done with all these costumes. You know, characters coming in the middle of the night, leaving stuff. I I'm just, over it. I just. Uh, do you I do think, a basket for the youngest though? No, but it's nope. like, but nope. but from the candy end, it's like Halloween. Just yeah. wait, a, wait a day. And it'll be all 60% yeah. oh off my God, on Monday. Yeah. You go and into you can a Walgreens, you can have everything. Yeah.